Hi everyone, my name is Carrie. Thank you for being here today. I have not filmed a book video in a long time. So once again, surprise to everyone. Um, this is not my main channel. I have a travel lifestyle channel, which I will link down below as always. Um, but if you watch my content over there, you would know that I was actually in Japan for a while and then I came back to Korea, but then my parents came to visit. So I have been pretty much absent. I haven't filmed in a month. I might have posted a video since then, but like I haven't sat down in front of a camera to talk about books in a long time. Um, and feels good to be back. Yesterday I met up with kind of a group of friends who are authors or aspiring authors or booksellers and we talked about books from literally, I met them for breakfast and we had like very late dinner all day. Book talk. Um, T-A-L-K. Talk. So I'm, I'm itching. I'm ready to talk to you guys about books. Today we are talking about two, two, two books, one of which I have already read, one of which I will start in this video and read it with you, and you can probably tell by the thumbnail what they are, but we're going to be talking about one book that was incredibly hyped and hated, and one book that has been incredibly hyped and so far loved, and that is Light Lark and The Fourth Wing. <laughs> so the book that I have already read is Light Lark, and I'm just gonna dive right into it by the way. Here we go. Welcome to the video. Here's the thing. I specifically didn't read Light Lark, and I specifically didn't want to talk about Light Lark because I just really don't agree with the amount and the specific type of hate that was going around um, the book community. I know that we love to hate on a book. I certainly do. I try to do it in a respectful way. I usually do it in a funny way. Like I, there are quite a few books that have made me like actually angry that it was not necessarily published, but that it was promoted in the way that it was, um, a la Zodiac Academy, Colleen Hoover, etc. But I still try and, and talk about it in a I don't know, I hope, like of either funny way or like a respectful way. Um, and I totally understand the anger, like the foundation of the hate for Light Lark. I get it, I get it. But as things do on the internet, I think it just got way out of hand. I think the, the main thing that I saw about it was the idea of like a publishing plant. So if you don't know, this is so out of whack. Um, Light Lark is a book written by an author who essentially made a TikTok saying, wouldn't it be great if I wrote a book about this and gave like a one sentence description of what the book could be about? It went viral. She then got a six figure deal to make this book a reality, right? Details came out, people were upset, and the rumor became that she was a publishing industry plant right? And the more that I talk to my friends who are published authors, the more that my mind is boggled by the publishing industry. And I feel like the people who are calling her a publishing plant are people who like don't necessarily know the ins and outs of the publishing industry because so many best-selling authors could be defined as publishing plants. Like, Publishing houses will pick the author and the work that they think is gonna be the bestseller and they put so much marketing into it, so much work into it, and then can ignore other authors that they have signed, right? There are publishing houses that will have a book in mind that they want, right? They'll have a story they want told and they will approach authors. They will audition authors to see who will get to write that book. Right? So there are just so many different ways in publishing where it doesn't just, it's not always just a person has a good idea, queries the hell out of their story, gets an agent and gets published, and then just like with luck blows up. So I just, there were just a lot of things about the hatred that made me feel a little bit icky. I didn't want to be a part of the conversation, but now that I feel like time has passed, and now I have read Light Lark, I can say confidently that this was like, not a good book. It was just, it, and it's like not anything 
bigger than that. Like, it just wasn't a good book. And I can move on with my day. Like, if I was a normal reader, if I didn't have a booktube channel, I would have probably not finished it, but I would have read it and then been like, Bleh, and forgotten about it within a week. Again, I understand the foundation of the anger. It, 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 it's just a confusing situation all around. Like, I feel like it's a circus and the people who are making so much noise about how angry they are about this book, like, don't realize that they are in the circus too. They think that they're the audience, but they're very much one of the clowns, you know? Like, we're all clowns. If we're having discourse on the internet, most of the time we're all clowns, right? So I just kind of didn't want to didn't want to join, but here I am. <laughs> Lightlark, let me pull up what it's about technically, like, cause I, God knows, can't tell you. Hold on. Lightlark is a duology. I think it's a duology. If it's gonna be a series, Lord help us. Lord help her, because I don't know how she's gonna write more. Um, but this is the first in at least a duology. Welcome to the Centennial. Every 100 years, the island of Lightlark appears to host the Centennial, a deadly game that only the rulers of six realms are invited to play. The invitation is a summons, a call to embrace victory and ruin, baubles and blood. The Centennial offers the six rulers one chance to break the curses that have plagued their realms for centuries. Each ruler has something to hide. Each realm's curse is uniquely wicked. To destroy the curses, one ruler must die. Isla, Isla, Isla Crown is the young ruler of Wildling, a realm of temptresses cursed to kill anyone they fall in love with. They are feared and despised and are counting on Isla to end their suffering by succeeding at the Centennial. To survive, Isla must lie, cheat, and betray, even as love complicates everything. So essentially what her TikTok said was like, what if there was this magical island that only appeared every 100 years and the six rulers had to compete to break the curses of their realms? Which sounds good, right? Hence why it blew up, hence why she got a book deal. There we go, okay? Here's the thing about this book, and I mean this, I completely mean this as a self-burn as well because it's only fair for me to talk about my writing skills as I critique someone else's. Um, after reading this, it felt like something I am capable of writing. I'm very much an amateur. She's been writing for years. She has like a middle grade series. This is not her debut. It just should not have been this. It, it felt like something I could have written as like a creative writing exercise that would not be publishable. Like this um, I underlined a lot of things and it essentially felt to me like the level of writing that I would take as like my first ever novel, first ever draft, and I would take it to an editor, or maybe even before I would take it to an editor, like I would want to work it before I showed it to anyone. And this was the published version. So it was just very confusing to read because I was surprised that the publishing house and the editors were okay with putting out something of this caliber with this much hype. I would have thought that they would have wanted to cook it real good before putting it out. And my main example for this is the names of the kingdoms and the names of the people. They felt like placeholders for when you are writing and you're like, I'm gonna come back and name that better but she didn't come back and name it differently. So the realms are broken into kind of different elements, you might say. So there are six realms and there's the sun kingdom. What are they called? Sunlings. Mm -hmm. Sky kingdom, skylings, moon, moonlings. What, sea, are they sealings or waterlings? It's something like that. Um, we have the wildlings, we have the the nightlings, the darklings, the nightshades. They get a different thing. But it was just like the sunlings, the, the skylings, like it just felt like a placeholder. And then the names of the people as well were just kind of silly. Like sky was Azul, 
like blue um sun i think his name was oro like gold you know like it was just very it just again placeholder names it also just kind of didn't deliver with a lot of things like um so she's supposed to be this temptress and that's her skill is that they you know seduce men and then kill their lovers but that was never really touched upon other than like she wore a lot of really skimpy outfits i think there was supposed to be a love triangle but like we ne i never felt a connection to any of the characters the twist at the end i saw it i don't want to spoil it but like the second a certain character was introduced i knew how this was gonna end there just wasn't anything in there that surprised me or that i liked it was just a very empty book and sort of like i had i've just made a video about the wilderness of stars and i was so upset with shay earnshaw because i have liked her previous work but this one was the weirdest experience because i it felt like none of the characters connected to each other and it felt like emotionless this also felt emotionless i didn't understand how the centennial even worked it wasn't really there were details that weren't really explained the world building just wasn't really there geographically i couldn't tell where i was and that really bothers me when a book i can't there isn't like an actual physical plane that i can put things on and this I was very confused about where the islands were and was it just one island or was it six islands connected but then why did, couldn't they go back to their home like it was there were just a lot of things that I felt needed to be edited and needed to be zhuzhed <laughs> and it just wasn't it was just a really confusing read confusing in that it wasn't good but confusing in that I don't think it was like bad enough to make me so angry it was just blah which is fine i've read blah books I've, i read a lot of blah books let's be real you know how sometimes there are comments towards book reviewers that are like you shouldn't critique this book when you couldn't have written it i could have written this book and like that's not me showing off like that's just it was a book that could have been written by someone who isn't a professional writer um so yeah those are my thoughts on light lark i'm not really gonna say much more because it just was boring and there wasn't much to say like it just it was just a book that i read and i only finished it because i wanted to talk about it but i won't read the second one i thought it it got a little bit better maybe at the end but i just don't i don't think that she knew how to start a book and like lay the foundation in terms of world building i do think it got better at the end but i don't know why and and it had very strange rhythm to it like sometimes she would use a really long sentence and you could kind of like fall into the prose and then it became like really short sentences like almost fragmented segments it was very bizarre like everything about especially the beginning of the book was very bizarre and then i feel like she kind of sorted herself out at the end but it because we didn't have any foundation for the story the end just didn't hit at all so yeah that's it i'm gonna talk about it in my monthly wrap up because it's a book that i read this month but other than that i don't have anything more to say about light lark and i won't continue it because it just wasn't worth my time and i don't think it was worth the anger i know that people were more upset with the publishing deal itself than necessarily the book people are targeting a lot of anger at the author herself where perhaps it's a better conversation to be angry at the publishing industry right there's plenty to be mad about when it comes to the publishing industry so that's that it was hyped and people said it was bad i agree that it was bad it was a bad book um and it was available at my library without a hold so that's why i read it now and there we go so now on to a book that was hyped and i have yet to hear a bad thing about it i have one i saw one person on youtube i saw the thumbnail and someone said that 
it was like it looked like it could be a negative review that's the only negative review from all of the people i know who have read this book i've seen one potentially negative review for fourth wing all i know about fourth wing um is that there are dragons that's it i don't know anything else and that's how i want to do it so i'm not even going to read you the goodreads summary yet i'm just going to dive in and start reading it now and check in every once in a while i'm very excited i'm buddy reading this with my friend susan who doesn't read fantasy i'm going to dive into the fourth wing thank you for listening to my thoughts about light lark feel free to tell me about your thoughts in the comments um and all right let's go read about dragons shall we let's go we are starting off so strong first of all it says fourth wing fly or die so i'm into it but then the blurb on the front on the top is by our lord and savior tracy wolf of crave and she says it's the most beautiful it's the most brutally addictive fantasy i've read in a decade Tracy. I'm trusting you. And here we go. It says, a dragon without its rider is a tragedy. A rider without their dragon is dead. <laughs> chapter one, here I go. I'm going to try and read the first chapter without talking. I want to kind of sink into the story. Um, how many pages are we dealing with here? Over 600. But it looks like at the end of the book, there's like previews for other books. Whatever. 600-ish pages off I go, dragon riders, I'm into it. Kind of gives me Dinotopia vibes, if you get the reference. Um, here I go. Who do we think we're not going to stay away from? Mm? Okay, I lied. Sorry, I'm back. It's still the first chapter, but I'm really liking the way that it's written so far. But we did, in fact, meet, what's his name? Um, The one we're, we're supposed to stay away from, right? However, we see this guy and he is, and I quote, flaming hot, scorching hot, gets you into trouble and you like it level of hot. <laughs> Some of these lines are a little bit cringe, but like so far, I'm still enjoying it. Off we go. <gasps> so the other love interest, Dane, has a beard and we're gonna forget that exists. Collectively, okay? Okay. I don't remember falling asleep, but I think I just took a nap. <laughs> I was reading and then I was not. <laughs> so, hi. So I'm here with a 25% update, 26% update. I'm going to stop doing the like check-ins and showing you little sentences because I don't want any spoilers. There might be a spoiler section at the end, but for now, I'm just going to give you random updates of my thoughts. And 25% of the way in, I like it. I think, dare I say overhyped, it's, it's very, very good. I think just because of the amount that I heard about it and the way that it came, like pretty much everyone across the board who I've talked to has said that this book just came out of nowhere. Like everyone just started hearing about Fourth Wing um, and it just kind of has this crazy momentum and I think that it's kind of a detriment to it because it's it's a fine book. Um, I would say it's definitely like just 25% of the way in, like a very good book. I know that it's going to be my favorite book of the month, at least not the year, but the month. Um, definitely like in a, I've been reading a lot of just kind of meh fantasies. This is not meh. This is good. I am, I am drawn in paying attention want to know what's going to happen is it feeling very predictable absolutely but also you're going into it knowing it contains certain tropes and so it's gonna have a certain predictability to it i'm just not exactly sure maybe i haven't hit that point in it yet but like i'm just not exactly sure why it's like taken the world by storm at least the book world or it feels like it's taken the book world by storm. I'm not quite sure why it's not anything quite different um, than what I've, I've read. 
which isn't saying it's bad. It's just that it was so incredibly hyped that I came in with such high expectations and high expectations always kills a book for me. So I would definitely recommend it. I'm enjoying it, like I said, but it's just the hype might have made the first 25% a little bit of a letdown so far. But on we go, still enjoying it. I will check in at the 50% mark unless something amazing happens. <laughs> Same place, different day, I swear. Um, I am at 56%. I am flabbergasted because my friend Susan, who I'm buddy reading this with, finished the book already. I'm supposed to be the fantasy girly that reads things in one shot and she like ate this up. So I don't know why you're watching this if you don't like fantasy, but if you are watching this and you don't like fantasy and you just like romance, perhaps this is your book. Um, but yeah, Susan loved it. So, okay. Um, I'm at 56%. When I last talked to you, I was sort of like, I don't really get it. It's just kind of like, whatever. Right after I talked to you, there was an introduction of a couple new characters that I think changed the dynamic and made it a lot more funny. Um, so I am enjoying it. I still don't think that this is like the fantasy book of the decade. I just like all the characters. I enjoy the world. I think that it's structured really interestingly. And now we've just kind of been introduced to a bit of a mystery, which I think is what's going to carry us into the entire series. Yeah, is that all I really have to say? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And I think that it is just continuing to get better um, as more of the plot and more of the characters are introduced and stuff. So I have high hopes and then Susan's stamp of approval has got me like real curious. Um, and I also think that the romance, I mean, oh, it's definitely gonna be smutty. It already kind of got steamy, but it's steamy. I don't know, like it's steamy in a way that I think is kind of funny. I find that I'm, I enjoy smut scenes that have like a self-awareness and a little bit of humor to it. And so because this is very first person, we get a lot of the, our, our main character having a lot of like really funny internal dialogue going on and I appreciate it. So I'm not grossed out by the smut yet. I think it's a little eye rolly, like as I mentioned in the very beginning, the whole like smoking hot, scorching hot kind of thing. It's a little silly, but I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it so far. I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything. There was a, there's a big eye rolly part that we have already passed, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm powering through. See you, see you at the end, unless I really need to stop. See you at the end. I'm going to finish this baby today. I had my first Pilates class yesterday. I feel like my arms are little noodles. So I'm just going to sit on this couch and read about dragons. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi friends. I finished it. I am done with fourth wing. Um, what are my thoughts? So this video, the two books that I chose, I chose them because they were for better or for worse hyped. It was all about this word of mouth. There was this big buzz around both of these books. I feel like maybe the hype for fourth wing, like I kind of said earlier, was a little bit of a detriment to it because it was fine. It was good. Do I think it was better than any... Ooh, am I gonna get in trouble for, thank for saying this? Like, I feel like the quality of what I read is very akin to some of the things that I have read in Kindle Unlimited. The ones that are very much like enemies to lovers, fantasy romance. What set Fourth Wing apart? not a whole lot. I think it was good. Like, don't, this is the thing. It's like, don't get me wrong. I recommend it. Um, it's very action heavy. There's a lot of smut that ended up not being my style. Um, and I think that the way that it ended was really good. I'm excited to continue the series. Was it incredible? Did it rock my world. No. Um, I actually found myself skimming a lot of it. I thought that a lot of the battle scenes, because it's, it's basically like um, they're in this kind of academy to become riders or like soldiers 
Um, and so it's a lot of like tests and battles and blah, blah, blah to like make it to graduation, right? So there's a lot of these action scenes and they were just, after I've read like one or two, I was kind of done. I didn't necessarily feel like I was totally in the world. Like I was very aware the entire time that I was reading and I was taking a lot of breaks. I don't know if that's just my mindset right now. I'm like a little all over the place and distracted. I'm really busy. Um, so I don't know if it was, I can blame it all on the book, but I definitely was like taking a lot of breaks and like checking my phone and blah, blah, blah while reading it. So I would still say that I, I really enjoyed it, but do I think that it is like a fantasy book that will define our generation? <laughs> like it kind of felt like this was leading up to be? No, I think it's kind of funny. Like if, like I said, if this were to have been in like the Kindle Unlimited universe of like the enemies to lovers fantasy romance, I don't think people would have gone this crazy about it. Like the people I see online talking about how great this book is, I don't think they would have done it if they had found it on Kindle Unlimited. I think that there is a hype train that people are jumping on. It's just, it's just a fine book. Like I would give it, I don't rate things, but like it was within the four star category. It was just a little predictable and a little, I don't know like basically the hype ruined it for me because my expectations were like way 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 up here um so those are my thoughts the bad hype for light lark I wanted it to be a lot worse than it was but in terms of publishing issues aside because I know people are more angry about just the kind of birth of the book than the actual book so not talking about that talking about just the words on the page I expected it to be worse than it was it was bad, but I expected it to be much worse. Fourth Wing, I expected it to be much better because the hype was so good. Um, and it was just kind of a fine book. So a kind of bad book, a kind of good book. Here I am thinking I was going to be reading my favorite book of the year. Okay, let, <laughs> let me know your thoughts if you've read Fourth Wing. Um, like I said, I liked it. I would have liked it more if I hadn't gone in with the expectations that I went in with. And I mean, moral of the story, like that's always a bad idea to have high expectations for a book. Um, but yeah, just, it, I'm, I'm just curious. Like, again, I've seen people hyping it up that wouldn't hype up another Enemies to Lovers romance you know so i just wonder like what is it about this that did it was it the talking dragon i don't know so those are my thoughts i'm not going to go into spoilers because i don't really have anything to say <laughs> but i am excited for the rest of the series i will say that one of the twists i saw that coming long ago still good so Anyway, that's fourth wing. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to end this. So let me know your thoughts down below. Let's talk about it. And I will see you guys next time. Okay, thank you for being here. And I'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>